Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. I'm doing her slides because she's like low tech like me. So if we're not perfectly coordinated, that's life. That's just the way it goes, right? Hi, I am Nancy Stevens. I work in information and referral at Bay Path. And um, BayPath is a private nonprofit agency. We're one of um, 27 ASAPs that are around the state of Massachusetts. Um, we serve as 14 towns, one of which is Northborough. And, um, and we provide home care to people in their homes. Um, but we also have a lot of other um, services. We have a Meals on Wheels program. Um, I think I'm getting ahead of myself, but <laughs> anyway, um, we d yeah, we do have a lot of programs, um, which I'll get into in the next slide, I think. But what I want to say is I work at information referral, so um, and uh, there are two other I and R people there. Um, if a person has a question about services or, I mean, we get a lot of phone calls about various um, questions on um, all kinds of things. And so you would call information referral, you would get either me or my colleague Jane, and we can um, give you resources, we can um, tell you about, um, give you other information, or if it's, that you're looking for home care, we would then do a referral over the phone, and um, uh, after the referral, the initial phone referral, you would have an intake from one of our intake specialists. They would come to the home and um, do a full assessment in the home to determine if, um, if the person is eligible for home care. No, basically there's three criteria for the home care program. A person has to be at least 60 years of age or older. Um, the second criteria is that they have to have at least six activity of daily living needs. What that means is um, if a person needs assistance with bathing, dressing, um, meal preparation, housework, laundry, shopping, transportation, um, let's see, transferring, if somebody uses a walker or a cane or a wheelchair and they're having trouble transferring from the bed to the chair and um, any of those um, activities of daily living, if there's at least six um, with three, there are three critical, what, what the state or executive office of elder affairs um, determines that there are three critical needs, and those are personal care, meal preparation, and shopping. So if anyone has one of those critical needs, they would be eligible to get home care. Um, and when I say if they need assistance, sometimes people call and they say, oh, well, my son helps me with that. Well, that still means they have a need because if they're not doing it themselves and someone else is doing it for them, then that is a need. So, um, some, but oftentimes people will think, oh, well, I don't need that because someone else is doing it for me, but they do need it. Um, the third criteria is a financial one because we contract with the state of Massachusetts um, and we get money from the state. So they put out a cost sharing um, copay system and so, actually, anyone is eligible for home care. Um, it, it is sort of almost like a sliding scale. So even if a person is making a higher income, they are still eligible to get home care. Um, 
when the person is determined to be eligible, they, a person can get up to three hours of service per week, or the equivalent of $300 worth of service per month. And what that means is someone may need help with bathing um, maybe one hour per week, but they might also want to have Meals on Wheels. So the intake specialist will um, work with them when they go, when the intake specialist goes to the house, they will um, work with the, with the person or the family to develop a service plan. And um, the various, whatever the person needs will be factored in. Either they would be getting three hours of service or they might be getting two hours of service and some Meals on Wheels, or they might be getting a medication dispensing machine, which is also another cost. So it all gets factored into the, um, to the cost of the service plan. Um, so what did I... So now, so now talk about some of your... Other, but one of the things to emphasize is that there is no asset requirement. People are, uh, regularly think that when you're trying to qualify for these programs because of mass health, that there are asset limitations. There are none for the programs that she was just talking about. There, may, there are some income criteria. If you make more than a particular amount, there'll be a co they have a, there's a co-pay schedule, right? Yeah. But there's no asset criterion. So there are a lot of those kinds of, those things are available to you. Yeah. Um, a phone number. Well, I actually brought a lot of um, flyers here and brochures, and the phone number is on this information, but it, it's, um, 508-573-7200. Um, but you're welcome to take the flyers or talk with me after the presentation, too. Um, um, I believe that's it. Thank you. <laughs> so the first takeaway from, the, from, from Nancy is remember to know Nancy <laughs> and to know the entity. Get the phone number. Um, second, the care that she's talking about, now all of this care is it basically your tax dollars at work. They are your tax dollars at work. The, the, you know, the Commonwealth is paying all of their salaries. And all of these programs are your tax dollars at work. Um, so don't feel like this is charity, right? You paid for all this stuff, right? Third, um, just remember that if you, if you or your, if your loved one that you're working with needs more support than this, of course, you can buy it yourself and just think of this as a supplement, that you're just reducing the cost of the home care that you really need, right? Finally, go to this website. This is like a terrific website. They, this, this website just went up. Uh, it was funded with a couple hundred thousand dollars of Commonwealth money, and it is community specific. So you can literally click North Bro, right? Caregivers here, um, to really get a sense of the, the resources that are available just like right here. So it's a, it, they are a really, really, really good organization. So next I want you to hear from Tammy Pazaricki. Tammy's uh, program called Pleasantries, which is actually located in Marlboro, was one of the first in this area of the so-called social day models. But these are the programs that I think are going to be coming more and more prevalent as the population with Alzheimer's continues to expand. Once again, the estimate is there are 4 million people with Alzheimer's right now or about 1% of the population. So translate that to Northboro, what's that, about 200 people. In Northboro, right, that, are, that, have, that it is possible have got Alzheimer's right now, right? So as those numbers you know, keep, keep ramping up, these programs are gonna become increasingly important. So I want you to think about these programs, especially if you're not here and you're at home because you're like never leaving the house. Think about the importance of getting out for the person who has early stage dementia and for the caregiver. Because so many of these programs, especially in the early stages, it's a matter of people not burning out. It's a matter of caregivers understanding the possibilities, working closely with folks with dementia and not burning out. So, Tammy Pazaricki. 